In addition to cycle inventory, another form of inventory is safety stock inventory. Safety stock is essentially fallback inventory to tide us by in case something unexpected happens. For example, in the sawtooth inventory pattern, we assume that inventory is depleted at a constant rate and that replenishment happens exactly as we hit zero. What if the demand or consumption rate is not constant? We cannot predict exactly when we will hit zero. What if we do predict accurately, but our supplier messes up? The greater the uncertainty in our demand pattern, or in our supply pattern, or both, the greater the level of safety stock we will need to hold. The reason for safety stock being demand and supply uncertainty, reducing the uncertainty will allow us to reduce the safety stock. To reduce demand uncertainty, we can try to improve our forecasting process. The lower our forecasting errors, the lower the need for safety stock. Also, the farther I'm trying to forecast into the future, the more uncertainty there will be. Suppose I'm dealing with a supplier who offers a three-week lead time. I have to place my orders today for something that I will be using three weeks from today. Therefore, my orders will be based on my forecast for three weeks from today. On the other hand, suppose I get a supplier who offers a one-week lead time. I only need to forecast one week ahead. A good question is, why did I select the three-week lead time supplier? Obviously, because they are a little less expensive. But I have to pay the price in terms of forecasting errors, which leads to demand uncertainty. Even if the demand for a particular item is relatively steady within our company, that is, its usage is relatively constant, the withdrawals from inventory may be lumpy. For example, I want to minimize the number of trips my employees make to the warehouse, so I withdraw large quantities per trip. This lumpiness of withdrawal can cause demand uncertainty even where there is none. Another factor is supply-side uncertainty. Supplier uncertainty can be in terms of poor on-time delivery performance, incorrect delivery quantity, and even higher defect rates. Reducing supplier uncertainty means seeking out a supplier who is more reliable. Reducing all of these uncertainties will reduce the need for safety stock. Sometimes, instead of carrying a large safety stock, it may be better to substitute a large capacity cushion. Such a situation may occur if the item in question is very expensive, or there is a high risk of the item becoming obsolete, or the demand quantity is very small, etc. Rather than hold safety stock inventory, we keep production capacity available so that we can quickly fill the need for the item. Another form of inventory is pipeline inventory. Pipeline inventory is inventory that is being moved from one place to another. Let us say I have ordered something from my supplier. They've charged my credit card, but the material is going to take two weeks to get to me. The pipeline here is two weeks long, and my pipeline inventory is two weeks worth of material. Whatever my weekly demand is, twice that amount is my pipeline inventory. To reduce my pipeline inventory, the primary mechanism is to reduce the length of the pipeline. If I can find more responsive suppliers and shipment methods, my pipeline inventory will be reduced. Sometimes the supplier may be prepared to give me higher priority, better terms, or shorter lead times if I increase my ordering quantities. Larger ordering quantities, however, mean larger cycle inventory. In that case, I have to weigh the benefits of reducing pipeline inventory against the downside of increasing cycle inventory. To make my order more attractive to the supplier, instead of increasing the order quantity, I might be able to enter into a long-term relationship. How about I guarantee the supplier a certain quantity of purchase over the year? 
My order is now attractive enough for the supplier to offer me better terms and quicker lead times. However, I just don't want the whole year's worth delivered all at once. That would increase my cycle inventory. I'd like the deliveries done in smaller quantities. Another form of inventory is anticipation inventory. This kind of inventory is built up in anticipation of future need. Demand and capacity occur at different points on the timeline. We are attempting to bridge this time gap using inventory. Suppose we are producing an item that sells primarily during the holiday season from Thanksgiving to Christmas. We start our production several months in advance and build up inventory in anticipation of future demand. Similarly, suppose we are producing snowmobiles. Even though we sell them primarily in the winter, we produce them year-round in anticipation of future demand. Or suppose we are producing tomato ketchup. We buy tomatoes in large quantities during the growing season in anticipation of future use. Given that anticipation inventory is used to bridge the time gap between when demand and capacity happen, the greater the time shift, the greater the amount of inventory needed. With many service processes, to avoid long customer waits, we try to match our demand and capacity within a short time window. To do that, we have to set our capacity to meet the peak rather than average demand. Applying the same principle here, we can reduce anticipation inventory by matching demand and capacity within a narrower time window. Consider the snowmobile example. Here is our demand that peaks in winter. Meanwhile, we plan our capacity based on average demand. We build up anticipation inventory all year round and use it up during the peak season. To avoid anticipation inventory, we could build a larger factory with enough capacity to produce all the winter demand in winter itself, then mothball the factory for the remaining months. By better matching demand and capacity, we can avoid anticipation inventory. This option, of course, might increase our costs considerably. Alternatively, we can try to move some of the demand to better match our capacity by means of suitable off-peak pricing and promotions. Do you want to buy our snowmobile in the summer itself? We'll give you a fantastic discount. By smoothing out our demand over a larger portion of the year, we can minimize the anticipation inventory while also better utilizing our capacity. Another alternative is to introduce a different, complementary product line that utilizes the non-peak capacity. That way, our capacity is high enough to meet peak demand, we keep our facility occupied all year round, and we minimize anticipation inventory. For example, if we produce a snowmobile for the winter demand, how about producing a jet ski for the summer demand? If we have a ski lift that is lying idle during the summer, how about offering scenic gondola rides? If we produce lawn mowers for the summer demand, how about producing something else for the winter that utilizes our small engine production capacity?